Hello everyone. I am Pastor Chris Ehidiame, and I'm here with Reverend Dr. She Reverend Dr. Shegun Olubemi, live downtown Dallas. We're going to be having a kingdom conversation. We want to talk about the body of Christ, what God is doing in the church, with his church globally. So we're going to look at, you know, we're going to be defining a lot of terms today. We're going to look at the present state of the church and prophetically by the power of God's spirit. We're also going to look at the future of the church, the destiny of the church. Okay, so before we start, I'm going to ask Reverend, you know, to say something, you know, to greet you and then to say a word of prayer. And then we'll begin our kingdom conversation. So, Doctor, over to you. Yeah, we thank God for this privilege. It's obviously you see where we are. It's downtown Dallas. And then um, there is uh, a shift in the body of Christ globally. That's what I believe God is bringing your way. So I pray that this period you will key into what God wants to share with us today. Uh, the body of Christ called the called out one day this year. I remember you were asking about yes, that yesterday. We we'll start off with that. He's experiencing something in the spirit. And only those who are whose ministries sound like or functions like the heart of man, you know, will be in the closet, but he can feel the heartbeat of the Father. I believe that's what God is doing these days. So, Hallelujah. Uh, it God. promises to be an interesting conversation. Hallelujah. So, take a seat, take a pen, take your writing pad, and follow us closely. So, I'm going to be asking Reverend a couple of questions, and it's going to help a lot. So, Reverend, I want to ask, you know, Jesus said, you know, Jesus said to the apostles, he said, I will build my church, you know, the ecclesia. I will build my church upon this rock and the gate of hell will not prevail against it. So what exactly was Jesus talking about? What is the church? What is the ecclesia that he was talking about? Yeah, the original word for the church is, is the, that word ecclesia is actually the word assembly. Glory. Uh, so it, it was a word used by the Greeks. Okay. And usually, Ecclesia were more like selected people that were called out of the majority. Say, out of 6, 60,000 people, they could bring out 600 or 6,000 to represent the people to make decisions, to have conversations. So, when you see that, it, then it was later used to call, you know, when the scripture is talking about the church in the wilderness, yes. the ecclesia the in the wilderness. wilderness. Uh, definitely, if, if it says the ecclesia in the wilderness, it means the called out ones in the wilderness. Who are those that were called out? Wasn't all the Egyptians? Okay. Definitely, it was the children of Israel that were called out, and they were later called the church in the wilderness. So the usage of that word church is the assembly, is the called out ones, the assembly of the called out ones. In ancient Greek. They were the ones responsible for passing, you know, laws or making important decisions regarding po the polity of the nation and the direction of the nation. So it was so essential. So when the word became sort of used and adopted, written in the same Greek, you know, the Konya Greek, talking about the assembly of the believers, is the called out believers, is the called out ones. Absolutely. Called out of where? The church then understood that if the church in the wilderness, where the assembly of the wilderness called out, then the assembly of the New Testament called out are those who are called out of the world Hallelujah. into the body of Christ. Praise into, God. you know, now forming, later we call it the church. Okay. And, you know, there are other, you know, etymological explanations for it, but basically that's the word ecclesia, the called out ones. Hallelujah. And whenever we're talking about called out ones now, it cannot just be, you know, just anybody. It has to be those who are called out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light and then called out of the worldly system and lifestyle into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. And so the church, like people will say, then to us, to our usage today, has many connotations. For instance, everyone that is called, whether you are Baptist, Anglican, Catholic, anywhere, all the Presbyterian, anywhere, Pentecostal, the evangelical, whatever, about us around the world, if you are called out and you are born again, added to the body of Christ, 
you become church universal. Hallelujah. The assembly of saints that are universal added to those whose names are written in heaven. Hallelujah. And those who are already trans uh, who have gone. So both who are in heaven, those who have been do who have made the transition, and those of us here, we form the assembly. Hallelujah. Not assemblies. Hallelujah. Paul will say, I bow my knee to our father, uh, of whom the whole family family, family in heaven and, and on earth. earth. Because we remain one family. Hallelujah. It's just the location God. that is different. Praise God. Then so we remain the same member, just like I'm in the United States now. But I have family members who are in Canada, Hallelujah. family members in Nigeria and different parts of Africa and Kenya. Doesn't make doesn't make us different families. Wow. We remain the same family. Hallelujah. So that some of us have transited, made the transition. Paul, the apostle Peter, Abraham, all of them made the transition. Doesn't take away from us. Hallelujah. We form the same assembly. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. Now that we that church universal is also called church Hallelujah. by biblical or theological denomination. Then church local, okay, where a group of the body of Christ uh, meets. They, are, they, they represent the church in that local assembly. Hallelujah. And where two or three of us are gathered and we gather in the name of the Lord, we form church. Hallelujah. Because each of, in, each of us individually dwelt in the Lord. And so we are also church. Praise God. So when look at people, believers meet, then theologically, it's also used to call church. Praise God. Of course, the, there are denominations, there are other things that we refer to as church. But biblically, the church is really not a visible congregation. Wow. As it is a supernatural, mystical, universal body, Hallelujah. which only God knows. The Lord knows those who are His. Hallelujah. But let anyone who calls on the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. Hallelujah. So the church itself. So somebody to where the Lord will do nothing but will be them to his people. So who are his people? The Lord knows those who are his. And if he knows those who are his, it's not you to define because a group of people means it's a, no, except this group of people know this God is not moving. No, 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 no. Only God knows who who are they called out. Wow. Because I, I, from every stage on every phase of church life, only those who are called out. And some time ago, we were all, you know, in one one body. Until somebody said, no, we can't be worshiping refugees, we can't be doing indulgence. We have to go by the scriptures. Hallelujah. I got a revelation. The judge shall live by faith. Yes, sir. And now, the, okay, the judge shall live by faith. Praise God. And then we began to say, look, we got to live by faith. Hallelujah. Everybody began to sack the scriptures and they were giving access to the scriptures, which you didn't have access to. And then after a while, somebody got a revelation that, look, when you are saved, then you need to get baptized. So from there, we came into Lutherans, from Lutheran to Baptist. Yes, sir. And from there, somebody fell, you know, and then we began to feel experiences coming up, coming up, scattered experiences. And then 1904, we came into the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And so the church, and every time, look at it, at every time when the word came, when the revelation came that the body of Christ, I mean, we, we, we need to come by faith, right? Yes, sir. It's the judge shall live by faith. The whole order persecuted those who are coming out. Mm -hmm. Then when these people who came out by faith, you know, someone, some persons discovered we can be baptized too. Yes, yes sir. And this is an injunction. They were worshiping the Lord here. These guys were now adding Baptists, and they call them Anabama Baptists, oh. the, the second Baptist, Hallelujah. because they believe that you've been sprinkled and all that. Okay, now we we'll call them Anabaptists, second Baptists. They were actually worshiping, and they were drowning people in water. You said you believe in baptism. They grabbed them there, and they, they sank them, and they died. Wow. You know, drowned wow. them in the water wow. because you wanted to be baptized. Wow. And, you know, and all that was going on. But some people came and moved on. And then when it came to the Holy Ghost, as late... As 83, 84, I was living out of my own denomination. Wow. You know, today, I have many of those denominations who are now baptized. The pastors are filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And all the elders are tongue-talking elders. And they invite me even to National Pastors Association. I go to minister. The last time they invited me, and, and, and I had the privilege to minister, and I saw people coming to pray. Pastors Praise of my God. denomination coming to pray for 
baptism of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And they were prophesying. The same reason for which we were driven out. Hallelujah. Threatening with beatings and Hallelujah. all Hallelujah. Now they've entered into the same experience. So now the church at every time will not just be those who refuse. Those who came out. Hallelujah. God is always having people coming out. Hallelujah. And moving out with his experiences. Praise God. And then later, with time, we now have where we all came out from currently, we have charismatics speaking in tongues, sharing the word of God and alive. Then we have the Baptists Hallelujah. filled with the Holy Ghost and moving on. So at the end of the day, it's no longer about you defining the church as God defining his church. The Lord knows those who are his. Hallelujah. So uh, that's the point. And so what God is doing with his body, the body of Christ, um, both uh, visible as in terms of believers and invisible in the realm of the spirit is is something Hallelujah. awesome that's okay. inspiring. Doctor, I'm gonna ask you a question. Okay. Now the church is the called out ones. Okay. Now what are we called into? As in for what purpose? So let's look at the purpose of the church now. Okay, the church universal. Now, when Jesus said, I will build my church, to what intent? Okay, so why did he found the church in the first place? Why did he call us out in the first place? So why did he call this assembly? Why did he found this assembly, these called out people? So what is the primary purpose of the church? Why do we exist as a church on earth? Yeah, uh, you know, this is the same word that we use for repentance. Okay. You know, and then you always hear people say, well, I know I've repented. Okay. I gave my life to Christ. You repent from something. Okay. Into something. Okay. Because the word repentance is change your mind. It's okay. metanoia. Change okay. your mind. So, it's, it's not so much as what you repent. I mean, it's as much as what you repent from. So what you repent into. Okay. Because you change your mind from something and then you change it into something else. And um, if that is the case, then we have to understand that you are called out of something okay. into something. Okay. You are called out of the world into his, the kingdom of his dear son. Yes, sir. Therefore, your job will be to find out how does his kingdom work? Oh, how God. does the kingdom operate? Praise God. Because if you just came out and say, well, I, I've come out of the world, the next thing is, into what? And if you are now understanding he called you into the kingdom, how does the kingdom work? Oh, hallelujah. Into what? Unto what? Unto how do you operate? And so, um, and if he says he calls you now into the kingdom of his dear son, then we begin to, to find out how kingdom works. There is a king. And then they are his citizens. Hallelujah. There are his citizens. And the citizens don't walk by their rules, but by the rules of the king. And so you can teach it from kingdom uh, perspective. The other way to see it, which some people may not necessarily teach it that way, is discipleship. Okay. And uh, so whether a person is teaching it from kingdom perspective or is teaching it from uh, the perspective of discipleship, you are saying the same thing. Oh, first because first. you are talking about be citizens of the kingdom and they're being disciples of the master of the master Hallelujah. and then what are the responsibility of citizens to the king his constitution his word Hallelujah. and then following his constitution follow his word and then submitting and then the, the citizens don't have any right don't have anything they are as much as the king gives to them and whatever they have is called commonwealth Hallelujah. supervised by the king by the king himself and then when you come into the kingdom uh, uh, when you are talking about now, not teaching from kingdom, but from, from disciples, then you come up that everything belongs to the master. You say, we have left all and we have followed you. And the kingdom of God is like, if a man should find uh, a, a merchant looking for good pair, and then when he found one, he says all that he has, he buys into the kingdom. The kingdom of God as if is a man looking for treasure. Then he goes to a place, he finds a treasure, tre uh, tre finds a field with treasure. Then he goes to sell all. And he comes to buy not the treasure, but the field. Praise God. Because you seek first the field, Praise God. which is the kingdom, and everything, the treasure is there, belongs to you. Praise so God. now he goes to sell all. He comes to buy the field, and then he owns the field and the treasure. So every time you see discipleship, whoever will follow me must forsake all. Hallelujah. 
must take his cross and follow me. Hallelujah. Must hate everything else and love me supremely. So Hallelujah. at the end of the day, whether you teach it from the uh, the perspective of the kingdom or you teach it from perspective of, uh, of discipleship, all is involved. Hallelujah. There is a king, there is a lord. There is a king who is lord. The word lord is the word master, is the word controller, is the word the ruler of everything. Hallelujah. That is the word Adonai, Praise which God. means ruler. And now you have all. So whether you are a decide, you say, well, I'm a kingdom citizen, you 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 submit everything to the king. Hallelujah. And the king dictates your lifestyle. Hallelujah. Then you say, well, I I believe in teaching it as a disciple. In discipleship, you will have the Lord. And then you have the master and everything. And that is why uh, a lot of us are, are at the point where Peter was. Hallelujah. When he say he wanted to wash his feet, and then he said, "Not so, Lord." Oh wow! You know those are two words you don't use. It's oxymoron. You can't use those two words together. You can't say "Not so, Lord." Wow! They are contrary in terms because if he's Lord, whatever he says is so. Is so. Wow! So you cannot wow. say "Not so, Not so, Lord." Wow! If he's Lord, then everything he says is so. Wow! And so when Peter was saying that, he didn't understand what he was saying. Wow! He's Lord. He is the Lord. That's the controller, the governor, the owner, and the ruler of everything. Praise that's God. the word Adonai, Lord. Praise God. Wow. You know? So that's why uh, what God is doing, especially in our days, is, is very unique. Wow. You know, because there's the, the reactivation or the rejuvenation of the kingdom mindset. Wow. Uh, discipleship again in the body of Christ. Wow. Praise God. Yeah. Uh, hallelujah. So, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, you talked about the, the progression over time. You know how we move from justification by faith, and then people came into the experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, you call it um, the Pentecost, Pentecost, and then you have Baptist over over time, and then the Word of Faith movement. So I was going to ask you. You know, we have, we had different movements. You know, a period of time where God begins to emphasize a truth and bring the church into the experience and experience of that truth. So I want to ask you, so what is God, you know, you, you, you started on that track already. So what is God doing in our day? You know, Jesus said, let him that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. So what is the emphasis of the Spirit in our day? What exactly is God doing in our day in the church globally? Yeah, you know, from the mind of the Spirit, as the Lord will share that, I know there had been a lot of abuses, okay, especially when there was a wave of the prophetic, okay. Um, but you begin to see that as much as people are talking about the prophetic, you know, the lingo and defining it by people falling down, okay, you know, throwing up all kinds of things. Do you find that those who are saying they were prophets or bishops, they also say they are pursued? Yes. Okay. I mean, the person has a, a congregation of 10 people. He's supposed to. Okay. A congregation of two people or three is supposed to. Our apostles is in our portfolio. They don't even know the people they are sent out. And the word apostle, uh, uh, they are sent one. Apostoli, they are sent one. Okay. They are people that are sent, giving primary assignment to a group of people, donations of, you know, people group. And, um, and every time there's a move in an aspect of the body or, or, or in an area in the body, you always find it reflecting because we don't understand what God is doing. Mm. So that we align ourselves with what God is doing in the spirit and say by that we, we put it into titles. Mm. Mm. Wow. There was a time that everybody was answering bishop. Yes. They was called evangelists. Yes. Or most people who were answering apostles today were called bishops. In the past, in and the past. then or later prophets. Yes. Now the transition to become to, the transition to apostle. That tells you that what God is, uh, what, what I perceive is doing, and I've seen in my experience around the world right now is um, that is turning the heart of the body back to the apostolic move again. Oh, hallelujah! To bring the church back to its foundation. Hallelujah! Uh, there's a way he started the church, and there's a way he will come back for the church or take the church to the next level. First, oh, hallelujah! And usually. The apostles are wise master builders, telling us about the foundation, bringing us back to our foundation. Every time there's a revival in the body of Christ, from the Old Testament, one clear thing you always see is what we call 
a resolution to the apostles or the prophet of their foundation. Oh, hallelujah. In the days of Moses, Moses was the prophet of the foundation of Israel. Hallelujah. And every time there was a revival, the, the kings and the prophets would always refer them back hallelujah. to the laws of Moses. Hallelujah. Take it again, dust it up, and, and walk by the precepts Christ, that Moses gave to them. Hallelujah. And the same thing, the revival of our days will always be the return to the prophet of our foundation. Which is Christ, Hallelujah. and then that is why you are seeing more emphasis on people, you know, saying you we need to pray, we need to be more disciplined, we need to, you know, we need to prove that we are real believers. Hallelujah. We need to with the return of the apostolic days. People are now, you know, itching and now hungry for God's truth Hallelujah. to be established in their lives to say, look, there is more to what we are doing Praise than we've been doing. And I see that as I go around. And different nations. Uh, this is my fifth uh, state. Also, the sixth one since I came into the U.S. Hallelujah. Um, and then, but one thing, there's a common denominator: people's hearts are yearning to go back to believe in. Hallelujah. Praise people God. want to experience what is the real thing that the Lord is doing. Praise God. And that I call discipleship. Hallelujah. People want to really live the life. You see, and today at any point in time of church history, people are more critical about the church now. They are critical of the church than it has ever been. Oh, wow. Because they want to see that you are not just a sayer, you are not just a speaker, you are a doer. First time. They want to see. So everybody wants to see that we don't care about your title. We care that you reflect the man you are talking about. Wow. And, and you find a lot of people like me, I tell people, when I preach to some people who don't believe, uh, they, they say to me, um, I'm not a, I don't want to be a Christian. I say, I'm not a Christian too. And they say, ah, but you're a pastor. I said, no, I'm not a Christian. Hallelujah. And the reason I say I'm not a Christian is because the Lord did not even call us Christians. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was the believers, I mean, it was the unbelievers in Acts 11.26 who were there reading them, making fun, and said, these are little Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord will call us. He say, "You are my disciples." Hallelujah. He say, "You are a city set on high." Praise God. Then He says, "You are the light of the world." Hallelujah. Then He says, "You are door." Praise God. Then He says, "You are shade." You are my flock. Hallelujah. These are the names. He says, "I am the I am the vine. You are the branches." Hallelujah. You are a branch in the vine. Hallelujah. And if you are a branch in the vine, then you take your source or sustenance from the same source Hallelujah. with the vine. Hallelujah. You all take from the tap root. We take it together. Praise God. And then I give expression to the vine because I'm the one bearing the fruit. For the world to see. Hallelujah. And then I'm the same person who is giving the expression, abide in him, he abides in me. Hallelujah. We are together, together we make divine. We answer the same nature, uh, we take on the same nature, yes. the nature of vine. Hallelujah. We take on the same name. And so he can't be vine and I'm something else. Oh, praise God. If he is vine, then I am vine because I'm the branch. Hallelujah. And, and just on and on like that. So we're now beginning to see challenges coming to the body of Christ and say, Live as the man you speak about. So I tell people I'm a disciple. He said, disciple of who? I said, disciple of Jesus. Now they now want to see me live as Jesus. Do you think if the body of Christ today refuse to answer the name Christ and we all say we are disciples? And they say disciple of who? Say disciples of, of, of Jesus. Do you think we will accept the bride? Wow. Do you think we will do the, some of the things we do? You know, uh, one of my... Uh, uh, very good, uh, our members many years ago, and you know, good friend of us, uh, is still in one of the churches we found. Him. He told me how a Muslim man challenged him. He said, This man was a former governor, and they had an, a political arrangement that it would move from zone A to B and B to C, then back to A, B, C again. And then all of a sudden, they began to plot. When it came to the turn of B or C, they started plotting, let's take it to B, another thing. And the man asked him, he said, uh, the Elijah asked him, he said, Doctor, I want to ask you a question. If Jesus was here and there was a situation like this, what will he say? He said, Why, well, Your Excellency, actually, he said, Now you are talking like a politician. Talk like Jesus will talk. Hallelujah. I want you to talk like a disciple of Jesus. What will Jesus say? Okay, if you won't tell me, let me tell you this. Jesus will say, Go and honor the agreement you made. Hallelujah. Praise God. So you see that the onus is on us when you say you are a disciple. To prove, to live like the, uh, the master whose disciple you, you are. It's on us. And so 
there's more demand. That's why the social media is, is calling us to accountability now. Everywhere on YouTube and all that. All this uh, insult, scandal and all that against men of God is it's a form of accountability that the church ought to have taken by itself to begin to say, are we living as disciples of Christ? Are we really measuring up to what he called us into? Or are we just doing our own thing? And when we won't do that, the Bible says, if we should judge ourselves, then we shall not be judged wow. but of the world. But now the world is judging us because we won't even judge ourselves. Wow. To say we are out of alignment wow. with the discipleship program handed over to us. Wow. And of course, that's partly because we misunderstand the Great Commission. Wow. The Great Commission say, go ye into all the world and then make disciples Hallelujah. of the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son. Hallelujah. So now he's saying, go into and make disciples of nations. What we have done is that we've gone into the world and we're making converts mm. to the world. Yeah. So if you go in making converts, you're not likely, then you've changed the definition of terms. Wow. And definition of terms had reduced your assignment to just making converts. Wow. But if you understood that what he was saying is, go and make disciples, then when you make the convert, you know you have just started from the foundation. This is the first step. Hallelujah. They're converts. Yeah. But the plan or the program is to take them to discipleship. Wow. So that's why the, 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 the salvation of a soul is the work of an instant, of a moment. But the manufacturing of saints, of disciples, is a lifetime program. Wow. Wow. It's not the exclusive preserve wow. of the big men of God you wow. see, or the fathers. Wow. Now today with their names you can make, make a, a mention around the world, they say, wow, those guys are in discipleship. Wow. It's the calling on the life of every believer. Wow. To be as his master. Wow. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. So discipleship. You know, God is returning us back to our apostolic foundation. Hallelujah. So that's what God is doing in the day we live in. So I want to ask a question. Now, this is your, you know, the last time you, came, you visited the U.S., you shared the prophetic body with, you know, with us, you know, the word of the Lord. And then you, you began to speak about the revival that was coming. And shortly after that, we began to hear news of revival breaking up in different parts of you know the nation, the Asbury Revival, and then other places they were little pockets of revival here and there. So I want to ask: so what is the burden of the of, of the Lord in your heart this time? What is the word of the Lord for, for North America, for the United States? What is God saying to the churches? Yeah, in this you know, like I shared with you before, it's a burden I've carried for uh, since 2014. Hallelujah. That's uh is that seven, eight years ago? Eight years ago. Uh, since 2014, I've carried this body. Uh, and it's, 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 been, it's been there. The Lord has shown me. Hallelujah. I'm literally, I'm literally living that experience. Hallelujah. Um, I'm in the U.S. today because of that body. Hallelujah. You know, uh, I, I, I didn't think I was going to do this much travel this year. But the burden is there to say, come back, say a few things in some places, Hallelujah. and come and I will show you that. Hallelujah. So the body, and God showed me this also in 2019, while I was in Calgary, in, uh, is that Calgary? Yeah, in Calgary. Uh, I, I was with CLA in um, Calgary and ministering there. And that, the Lord showed me the revival that was going to come in there. Hallelujah. In Canada. And so I know that in God's program, right now, in spiritual mapping, uh, what God is doing right on the face of the eyes, the release of this Hallelujah. revival. Praise God. And uh, all things being equal, I see it erupting next year. Hallelujah. Praise I see God. it erupting next year. Hallelujah. Uh, I, I dare say that that's literally what I'm living for Hallelujah. right now. Praise if God. you ask me, Everything I want to think about is, is just that. Hallelujah. Because God has shown me how that revival will come and it's going to run a span of a span of ten years. Hallelujah. It will change the way church is done now. Hallelujah. Praise church God. will be completely different. Hallelujah. And it, it will be different. You know, just the way the Pentecost, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost in 1904, as we say, change the way church was done. Hallelujah. 
in this coming season, the church will be different. Hallelujah. The way we do church will be different. Praise God. Because God will come up in it will show forth like a mighty, terrible ah, one. And people will seek nothing but the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And uh there's a song we used to sing a hymn. Uh the song the hymn is uh how to reach mercy men of every birth. Hallelujah. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto myself. Hallelujah. And the verse of it said, Don't exhort the preacher, don't exhort the pew. Just preach the gospel simple and free. Hallelujah. Commercialization of the gospel is coming to an end. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a coming revival. Hallelujah. People who want money, they want money just before they could preach or they will be out. They will be forgotten. Amen. A lot Hallelujah. of people you're hearing about now will no longer be heard Hallelujah. from. They will be at the background. Hallelujah. And the reason that will happen is because there's something that is coming up. Hallelujah. God is coming. There's going to be massive wave. Hallelujah. And one of the major characteristics of that wave is the glory of God. Hallelujah. The manifestations of His glory. Hallelujah. You'll be seeing miracles, signs of wonder. People will come in into the, the presence of God. It will be so massive. Hallelujah. In fact, literally, people will come in for fellowship Hallelujah. and and they will be in the awesome presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise Some God. people who have not understood the word of God before will supernaturally come into revelation, Hallelujah. come into understanding Hallelujah. of the word of God. Hallelujah. They will take scriptures and then the scripture will be open to them. Hallelujah. They will understand God Hallelujah. in a different dimension. Hallelujah. The prophecy in the old, in the New Testament that says, "There shall no one tell his neighbor, know the Lord, Hallelujah. because I will be known of them." Hallelujah. We are in that season Praise where God. a lot of people who are so dependent of on pastors, uh, they are dependent on oh, our Papa in the Lord, our Gio, our Jesus. Will not be Hallelujah. because they will hear the voice of the Lord by themselves. Their obedience will no longer be to church doctrines, Hallelujah. it will be to the word of God. Hallelujah. Their allegiance will be to God Hallelujah. and His word. It will no longer be what they're trying to do by themselves or to denominational affiliations. It will be God. Hallelujah. And as it is in every character, as the characteristics of every revival is, you know, whenever there is revival, denomination names are not important. Yes, sir. Individual names are not important. Hallelujah. Um, you know, self-interest is not important. Hallelujah. All that's uh, important, there will be prayers. Hallelujah. There will be worship. Hallelujah. There will be the word. Hallelujah. There will be fellowship. Hallelujah. These are characteristics of revival. Praise God. And that's the season we are in. Hallelujah. And the revival that is coming in America, already you did a, a post on it yes, the other sir. time. It's going to be a serious one. Hallelujah. Because the body of Christ will gain her respect back. Hallelujah. In fact, it's going to affect the polity because it's going to be transformational Hallelujah. in nature. How do I mean transformational? It will it will bring about community transformation. Hallelujah. Community transformation such that the cities, nations, states, governments will take on the nature Hallelujah. of the righteousness of God coming up. God. A lot of people will refuse to commit themselves into uh, polity Hallelujah. for fear that they cannot deliver. Hallelujah. And because they know they are not honest, they are not they, they can't deliver, they will step back Hallelujah. and call back on people who are who are God fearing, who have the mind of God to come in and take up the place. So it's going to affect nations Amen. whereby if there's any time the church has ever glory, who I mean if there is any time the glory of the church has ever been known and displayed this season. Hallelujah. I heard you be it. Praise God. Because people who truly want to rule and want to win by righteousness, they will come forth. Hallelujah. For, to offices. And people will, will vote for offices. Hallelujah. Because of the, the, the standard life of those people. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, I want to ask you one more question. You know, uh, somebody said miracles don't just happen. You know, somebody said, um, before there is a sudden manifestation, there is usually a period of preparation. The Lord whom you seek will suddenly come into his temple. Now, how do we... So what, what exactly is going to trigger this revival? How do we prepare for this revival? Are there specific things we must begin to do as the body of Christ that is going to you know, trigger the revival that we are talking about? Or will it just happen? Is it going to just be a sudden, 
sovereign move of God on his own? Do we have a responsibility towards this revival? So what's our part in preparation for this revival? Yeah, you know, it's what we said at the beginning. When we say, what does the church has to do? What What is the responsibility of the church? Who is the church? You have to define that. The Lord knows those who are his. It's those who have been called out. If I tell you this, that I'm the only one that God has shown this since eight years ago, then I'll be lying. That would be Elijah syndrome. Elijah syndrome is I only, I only, I'm jealous for you. I'm the only one. Then come and get shut up, man. There are already 7,000 people that you didn't even know about. If you have the platform to speak to the world, praise God for you. But there are other people who don't have the same platform. I can't say that God has given me privilege to come to America, go to White House, go to the Capitol Hill to speak. And that's the reason I was in Houston. You know, I came in from yes, Houston. Yes, sir. And last year I met this man and I was telling him this. He said, Oh, this thing you're talking about, William Seymour prophesied about it a hundred years ago. And I shared with you the revelation I saw to 2014 when the Lord told me, You carry the burden of a hundred year old prophecy. Oh, I Lord, told you that. Did I share that with yes, you? Yes, sir. I said, You carry the burden of a hundred year old prophecy. I didn't know about that. No, I knew about the revival that will come a hundred years later and all that. But I did not know Houston has anything to do with it. Wow. Until God brought me there in 2016 to to come in. Is that 2016 or 2015? And I spent two weeks praying in Houston. And God revealed to me all that is going on in America. Hallelujah. And told me about Houston. Hallelujah. And only last year I met a man who said, look, when the man left Houston, he said, you rejected me on the ground of racism. A hundred years later, you host the next revival. And what happened in Azusa Street will be would be a child's play compared Hallelujah. to what is coming. Praise God. And I didn't know that. Hallelujah. So, the body of Hallelujah. Christ is prepared. This man came visiting America, wanted to go back, and the Lord said, stay back. Hallelujah. And he said, Lord, my family, no, I, I won't stay here. He said, stay back. And he stayed in America until he has uh, became a citizen and all that. Moved his family here. And he's been here for 20-something years. Hallelujah. And he has carried the word of revival. Hallelujah. His whole ministry is built around this revival. Hallelujah. And he has access to different governors and different mayors in different parts of, of America today. Hallelujah. All because the Lord gave him the word. So I'm trying to say that what we know or what we define as the body of Christ is not necessarily or as we desire the church. It's only the Lord who knows. Hallelujah. Because he's speaking to me there I'm in Nigeria. I remember I, uh, I shared this with you when I met Andrew Womack. Uh, is that four years ago? I, I shared this with him. And when I was sharing with him, he said to me, my brother, I believe 100% in what you have shared. Hallelujah. And then he shook, took my hand and said, I want to agree with you that there's no way God will have shared this with you in Nigeria except you have a part to play in Hallelujah. it. Hallelujah. And then we, he began to pray with me, just Hallelujah. praying and pouring his heart to me. Hallelujah. In other words, there are different people located in different places who have heard the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God is speaking, has spoken to them about this revival. Hallelujah. That they have a responsibility towards Hallelujah. it. And they are doing what they ought to do. Praise God. Because I'm doing my part. Hallelujah. I told you part of what I will share tomorrow. How the Lord is turning my heart. Hallelujah. You know. If God is hungry to do something, he needs a people. Praise God. And he doesn't take a committee. Hallelujah. Quangos. He doesn't take quangos, uh, what do you call them? Committee of people. He doesn't take a, a group, a large group of people, thousands of them, millions of them, to say yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. If he finds one Abraham. Hallelujah. His, his job is done. Hallelujah. The Lord God will do nothing but was reveal them to his servants, the prophet. Who are the prophets? Not because you call yourself prophet A or B. He knows who his two prophets are. Hallelujah. And so he knows whom he has chosen. He knows the people he is revealing. And some people say, well, there's nothing like that. It depends on where you are with God. If you set your radar high enough to pick the frequencies of God, you will pick the frequency of what we're talking about right wow. now. So we can't sit back and say, oh, that, or, except the whole church repents. There's never a time the entire body of Christ, the entire earthly church and denomination will come together in agreement. Hallelujah. But God knows people on the inside God. whose heart he has turned and Praise we are all God. saying yes to him, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. So if he says tomorrow, you are living where you are, you're moving to America and you're going to do this, you're going to do that, he knows what to do to trigger. Hallelujah. But ours is to present ourselves to him and say, yes, Lord, Hallelujah. whatever you want, Hallelujah. Now, before you pray, there was something you said to me yesterday. You know, you, you, you began to share with me, you know, on a theological center here. 
how God began to speak to your heart. I remember I was going to break forth in that place. As we're having this conversation, you said something that, that you know, hit me in a very big way. You said ministry doesn't always have to be public. You know, it was very profound when you know when you said it. Ministry doesn't always have to be public. You know, for some of us, a lot of people, ministry always have to be public. Yeah. You know, so you said it was very profound. I want you to say it again. You know, <laughs> you know, yeah. you say it again. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you know, the challenge we have is that we have been told, we have been told, we have been taught that when it comes to ministry, it's all about the razzmatazz. It has to be public. It has to be all over the place. Everyone will know you. You are in the public glare, the full glare of the world. You are the. That's not necessarily what ministry is all about. Ministry is. An aspect of ministry is service. But largely, to minister to is defined as work for, wait on, take instructions from, assist. Oh, hallelujah. So if these things are, then if I'm ministering to the Lord, am I preaching to him? No. So I'm just ministering to him and I'm waiting on him. When you go into the restaurant, you have waiters who minister to you. And the waiters will come you say, excuse me, can we give you um, bread and, you know, soup? Can we give you this for your appetizer? Then you, they give you, then do you need anything to drink? They give you, and then if, at, at the time, they say, sorry, your meal will be ready. Then they serve you, they come, is there anything you, you, you need? He says, okay, you need, uh, do you want this? So they will come, I hope you enjoy your meal. They are, they are ministering to you. They are waiting on you. And so ministries doesn't have to be public to be ministered. Because at the end of the day, you are not ministering. You are not a minister for the people. You are a minister for the Lord. Hallelujah. It's the Lord that appointed you as Hallelujah. a minister. Hallelujah. And therefore, he reserves the right to tell you how to minister. Hallelujah. How to execute your ministry. Hallelujah. And, and, and a lot of us, we want to be minister, you know, for, uh, we don't want to be minister for special duties. Wow. Where he needs you here, he said today. He needs you in that village, he said today. You want to be a minister that is always in the center of activities. Wow. And let's say use the body as a lawyer. You want minister for the face. Wow. Facial ministers. Wow. Because the part of you, let's say, a beautiful teeth. He has brand white teeth. He has a good adapter. He has beautiful eyes. He has, he's a handsome man. He's this. So everyone that gets the credit will be the face. Wow. Nobody wants to be the heart. Wow. But the heart wow. has to beat for this face wow. to exist. Wow. The brain has to function for this face wow. to get the credit. Wow. All right. How about the how about the the waste valve wow. that passes out all the dirt? Wow. The moment that waste valve is not working, then your kidney, if kidneys are not working, then dialysis is the only way to bring out waste. Wow. And somebody is ministering and all that. So why do you think your ministry must be public before you you know that you're doing ministry for the Lord? Wow. Wow. Why should your ministry be public? Why wow. should the world, you know, see you before you know what you are doing? So wow. until we get to a point where our satisfaction is from the Lord, wow. our rewards, our thanks, our appreciation, and, and our relevance is determined by the Lord, by our obedience to the Lord, not by what people say and how they hail you, how many likes on the Facebook, how many likes, how many dislikes, how many loves, how many comments on your post. How many viewership? How much? How, how many thousands of people you have? Until we go beyond that, I will know that it, this thing is between me and the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we will not understand what true ministry is. Look at the prophets of old. Now, because of the by the grace of God, having operated in this area, in the prophetic area for for over thirty years, over three decades, I've known a thing or two. And then I hear people say, record all these things. Put them on social media so that when they come to pass, people can do you. Is it about me? Wow. About, or about the Lord? The last time I checked, we don't know the name of the donkey that Jesus rode wow. into Jerusalem. Wow. The prophet that went to prophesy the birth of Josiah, he prophesied to the altar of souls. We don't know his name, but instantly the altar came down. Wow. Altar of stone heard the word of the Lord. They came down. The king stretched his hand. The miracles happened because the man's hand withered. He prayed, the hand came back. All that happened, we didn't know the name of the prophet. Wow. 
Most of these people that God has sent to make announcement, go say this, go do this, they did that secretly. And we don't know their names. Wow. Wow. But they say that, and that's all. The whole city is, is in commotion. Wow. It's not wow. about you. Wow. Because what is it that we have that is not given to us of the wow. Lord? So if we understand that true ministry, somebody will say to me, oh, your ministry, well, we didn't say anything about you. You don't have a congregation. In the kingdom of God, we wait. Because we're, we're serving a God who has his correct assistance. Wow. His database wow. has no virus. Wow. Wow. He knows what wow. he has said to you. Wow. You know, Hallelujah. you can succeed in the wrong thing. Wow. See, sir, garden crowd is not an evidence of successful ministry. Wow. Because politicians do pack the crowd. Yes, they pack the stadium. Even much more. They do. Musicians, they pack, they fill up, they pack the crowd. Yes, sir. I mean, they pack the studio and stadium. Yeah. So, you're not doing anything special that you pack stadium. But that's not, that does not, that does not legitimize your ministry. It doesn't validate your ministry. And if you need crowd, if you need to be in public glare yeah. to be validated, you don't even know what your ministry is all about. Wow. Wow. The ministry ministry ha doesn't have to be public. Wow. Glory there to are people God. today that have gone to secret places and spoken over certain lands. Hallelujah. And that were reaping Hallelujah. their benefits. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do you know that before Philip experienced revival in the whole of uh, uh, Samaria when there was massive revival? Hallelujah. And, do, do you forgot the woman at the well? Yes, sir. Yes, she packed the entire city out by her yes, testimony. Yes, they sir. came to see Jesus. Yes, sir. Now we didn't hear anything until Philip Hallelujah. came again. Praise God. And, and so your public ministry is a product of certain secret labels. Wow. That people wow. have put on. And this is a statement I've made and I've repeated it a million times. Let me say this. The greatest move of God was never captured on video tape. Wow. He was never captured on tape. Hallelujah. Some of the greatest move of God. Hallelujah. They're not yeah. captured on tape. God Hallelujah. could have generated those yeah. technology to capture them. Hallelujah. But he didn't yeah. let that happen. Praise God. So that the excellency of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of power might be of God. Not Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Wow. We've had an awesome time, you know, having a kingdom conversation, trying to define, you know, what the church is, where we are coming from, where we are right now as a church, the body of Christ globally. And then where we are headed prophetically, you know. So I want to encourage you to share this video with family, with friends, you know, believers, church leaders, everyone you feel this is going to be helpful to. Feel free to share. The body of Christ needs to hear these things. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask Reverend to just pray over the viewers. You know, you that is listening, I'm going to ask him to pray and to speak God's word over you. So, Reverend, will you just speak a word over that woman, that man who is listening to you right now? Yes, Lord. We say that as a body of Christ, we accept together. Hallelujah. We accept responsibility for the coming revival. Hallelujah. We receive it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. You say, our God shall come, shall not keep silence. Yes. Because you say, fire will devour before you. Yes. It will be very tempestuous. But we know you are hungry to do something on earth. You've already told us the revival will last 10 years and yes. change the way we run church in the world. Yes. Father, we receive it. Amen. We come into this experience. Amen. And we open ourselves. Do what you want to do with Amen. us. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. <laughs>